and we joined live in the commentary position uh, by uh, Newtown manager Neil Baker. That was a batting performance, Neil. Yes, it was. Uh, certainly the second half time. I described that she didn't chat a lot of words uh, the better than I am. Because it was a non event as far as we were concerned at the first time. Uh, that's taken nothing away from the record. Well, I think it was excellent. Tactical. Uh, changed the way they play and did a right good job on us. And we weren't good enough to do much about it. We got pushed back, made poor decisions. Uh, and, and when our goal was disallowed on half time, I thought, uh, how can we get a, how can we be coming out of that at one apiece? You know, uh, you've got to say though, Neil, I mean, how that, again, we've seen another decision that seemed to be changed retrospectively. You know, the flag didn't go up, the referee had indicated to go up to the pitch and then suddenly there's a discussion and the goal gets cancelled. Tim is adamant that he did not handle the ball. How did you see it? So are their players. Say no more, Tony. Right. It's, it, it's, but again, I mean, how are we going to get away from this uh, where the officials seem to give something and then change the mind when put under pressure? We, we can't, unfortunately. That's the, that's the people that are officiating at our games. If they're not strong enough to stand up to their, as we all make decisions, uh, right or wrongly, but at least we stand by those decisions. They don't. They're, they're weak. Uh, I'm afraid. Uh, spoke to them after, and, and he said, you know, we might have got it wrong. Great, that, that's a big old news. Uh, but anyway, not enough about them. Right. Okay. So let's talk about Scott Waller because he seemed to get involved in a, an altercation down just below us here. And did that seem to get inside his head then, because he, he wasn't the Scott Warner that we used to see after that? No, something did. Something got in his head, uh, and he wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't reliable. He wasn't making good decisions, off the pace, uh, and I nearly made the changes early. But sometimes I'm reluctant to do that, Tony, because it shows your hand. If you leave, they, they actually know what you're going to do. They can reorganise a half time. Whereas I prefer to leave it so we come out uh, and they're not sure. Uh, and as you saw, at the time they reacted to what we were doing, so the game was level. The reason for taking top off was that more tactical? You didn't think he was getting enough for the ball? I don't think any of the front three got any, enough for the ball in the first half. I think Rob Stevenson went uh, 20 minutes without having a kick of the ball, our most dangerous play. Now that's not his fault, or wasn't his fault today. Uh, it, it was uh, of well, distribution out from the back, so no, you, I couldn't really knock the fours, but I've got to, got to try something a little bit different, uh, rather than playing with three up, um, to try and stop their eight as well. It was, it, there was everything was going on the end of 25 minutes, I've got about five different systems I, I was looking at, but decided on, on doing what I did. Um, and, and the players, it's nothing, nothing about me, Tony. The players make it work. They make it happen. Uh, you make the changes to get that effect. But it's still down to the players, and they did today. Um, You've got to say in that second half, Neil. I mean, you asked for you know a, a turnaround. You certainly got that. I mean, they were back level uh, in within a couple of minutes of the restart, and then what a great goal by Oli Harrison. And that's what you want from the centre half, isn't it? Well, I asked a pair of them all the game, any chance of one of you two scoring, uh, I nearly offered him a bonus, but uh, <laughs> Chairman, so you've got to be Chairman careful. was sneaking up on me, so I didn't do that. No, he's, uh, he, he, he hasn't been great in both boxes for the last few games, uh, I, he says, I can't score with me yet, he says, I score more with my feet, I said, I don't care how they go in. Um, no, it was a bullet header, and great delivery. I think it was Keynes, wasn't it? Uh, that, that put it in great delivery, and he showed some real determination. Which, since he had his, I mean, we forget it's only a month ago. He, he got a bad head injury, and he hasn't quite been the same uh, as far as winning his headers. But that he meant that one, and uh, he's won us again. So obviously it was a difficult game. The first half said that, and you've got to be really at it in the second half. Not just about taking the goals that you did, but also just doing the job all over the pitch because they were still a threat. Very much so. Uh, they were as good as we played, I think. 
the, the way they play. Um, we've got some good players, which are, every, every week teams have got good players. Um, so that's the respect that you have to give them. And, and if you're not at it, then that can happen. And we were, they were, and they, they were terrific in the first half. And like I say, we were fortunate to, to come in only 1-0 down. Now, Stoke fans will know uh, the signing that you made midweek. Uh, Tom Thorley he was with Stoke uh, as a young lad and was with them for years and years and years. And then obviously he's gone off and played at a higher level. Uh, how did the move come about? We, we heard a few weeks ago that he might be available. Um, we, we at the time had uh, Ross injured, broke, had a little bit of a move. We got well on loan. So, you know, Will could, could have gone back any time. We weren't sure how long we'd got him at, at that stage. So it made sense. We, we, you know, we've lost Jack Wakefield probably for the season. We needed strength in that area. Uh, and he's a good player. He's, I, he is a very, very good player. I remember seeing him uh, for, for the Stoke Youngers. I, I know his dad uh, played tennis with his dad, actually. But, uh, you know, he's, he's one of those players that can, he can change again. He's going to improve our team. There's not else he wouldn't be here. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't brought him along to, to be in the 16. Uh, I wasn't at training on Thursday night, so uh, I haven't seen a great deal of him. I want to see him in training before I put him in the team. But, we haven't, we haven't bought him here to... <coughs> Neil, obviously, uh, another three points. Uh, you know, you march on. I mean, obviously, uh, Macclesfield have uh, managed to get a, a narrow win today. But uh, what's your view now? You're in second place. Are you there? Are you, do you still think there's a chance that you can take the top slot? Well, if we didn't, we wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't be here. Uh, well, that, that's what we've got to aim for. Um, that's why we've got to keep winning football matches because I don't expect Macclesfield to lose too many. So we, we've got to, and the teams around, and they, <coughs> stick at it, keep up there, keep, keep winning games by who call by crook, uh, and hope that uh, you know there's a team good enough to, to beat Macclesfield. Finally, you've got a home game next week, uh, and you know obviously the, the team are putting on some fantastic performances. So we want to see Harrison Park rocking, don't we? They, they've been good at home, our fans. They've been terrific. Uh, if we could get a few more of them, that would be even, even better. Um, our, our performances, the last two games haven't been terrific, but we've come to two difficult places, got six points, and it'd be nice to, to play them in front of 7, 7.50 next week. It's a tall order, but I think our performances warrant those gates. And uh, Clitheroe are a team that I expect to be uh, up there at the end of the season. <coughs> they haven't started the season that well. So if you can do something to, to help the Blues out, you need to get down and support them in your numbers. And uh, Neil, thank you.